everyone and I'm gonna explain you the use of the GCM Comparer Shiny app. This is our first version. The first thing I'm gonna show you is that when I reload it, this link is gonna be in the description of this video. Um, that it takes a while to load and you have to wait here until it says that all 30 GCMs are loaded before you can work. See, now it's a zero, 30, now we can start. So. Uh, the first thing you have to do to use this Shiny app is to select the scenario you want to analyze. The main objective of this of this um, of this application is to understand better which GCMs you want to use uh, to to do a study when uh, for climate change in a certain area. So the first thing you can choose to do is to say, okay, so which one of those thirty global circulation models I'm going to use? and the usually all of them are going to be selected but you can select some if you if you if you want to um, you can also select the climate change scenario uh, which uh, you can select the year where, where you're going to project to so from 2050 or 2070 and the different rcps the climatic data resolution is going to stay in 10 arc minutes so far because we are working only with this uh, we're going to add the 5 arc minute later, but uh, for now we only have the 10 arc minute resolution. Uh, we, you can also choose of the, uh, on the type of comparison. You have two options. You can uh, select among bioclimatic variables. Um, you can see there's 19 of them that you can choose from. These are the usual 19 bioclimatic variables that are explained here. And you can choose one bioclimatic variable against another in the X and Y axis, or you can choose a multiple comparison. And here we would recommend to have temperature in one of the axis and precipitation in the other one. So if you want to choose another one, you might want to choose something else that is temperature here. So let's say minimum temperature in the coldest month. Um, but I'm gonna stick here. And then you can also choose among different ways of choosing your study area. So for example, you could choose by biome so when you do that, what's going to happen here is that the map is going to change uh, after a few seconds and it's going to show all biomes. And you can select from list here to see which biome you want to study from. But I'm going to go back to the drawing a rectangle, which is probably the easiest way of doing it. So using leaflet, you can zoom in to wherever you want to do your study. So let's say we want to do a study um, in the southern part of Italy. So we just press here in the box and then we just drag it. And with that, we select the area we want to work with. And then we just hit analyze. So it's gonna take a while here. Um, and you just have to wait for all the, for all the processes to be done. There's, there's a lot going on uh, under the hood. There's there's screen of the area, but there's a lot of calculation going on. Um, so just wait for a while. Uh, then I'm gonna start from, with the change from the present. Up. Then I'm going I'm gonna go back to others. So um, the first things the first thing you can see is you can see how the different models um, change uh, from the present. So in this graph, which is a plotly graph, you can see first the baseline, which is in green. And this one is going to tell us uh, in the y-axis the annual precipitation, which for that area the average is going to be 702. You can see it here when you click on the when you hover over this point. And there's also show us that the average temperature there is like it's some somewhere around 14.5, uh, which is around here. So then you can see all of the models and they're going to show you how it's going to change. So of course we can see that everything is going to get warmer, but it also seems to be that all of the models, actually all of them, show that there's going to be a, a slight drop in precipitation. So uh, the orange point here is the ensemble. So that's the average of all the models we are studying. And there we can see what we would expect for the year 2070 and um, you can go to all the models uh, so since this is uh, a leaflet so sorry since this, this is uh, plotly one thing that you can do is that you can 
um, you can zoom in. Um, so we're in zoom. Um, you can zoom in and you can look closely to any of the models here. Um, you can, of course, zoom out. You can auto scale. You can do all sorts of stuff. And one of the things that you can do is download this image that you zoom into as a PNG. Um, also, you can uh, download here the figure using this um, button here. And that's going to uh, make another kind of image. I'm going to show it to you, um, which is slightly different. You, can, you also have a table here which shows you, so for the bio one variable, which is the aver mean average temperature and the um, and precipitation, you can see for every model was a projection, but you can also see the delta. Uh, so for example, in this case, it says that is for this model, we're gonna have a drop of 120 millimeters in rain, and we're gonna have an increase of 1.8 degrees Celsius. You can also download that table uh, using this, and it's gonna. Uh, you can you can you will be able to get a CSV with all those variables to work with. Uh, you can also change this to delta. So instead of of looking at the graph with the um, um, actual numbers, you can see the difference. So here you also have the baseline, which is of course in zero, and the ensemble, which in this case shows us that the ensemble is gonna be. 2 degrees, 2.5 degrees hotter and 50 millimeters of rain lower. We can, you can, since this is also a plotly, you can do all the other things we showed you. So the other thing you can do here is um, see how the different models are gonna change with uh, among each other. That's the main objective of this. So this graph is gonna show you in the center. Um, what's going to be the ensemble. So, and then um, you have the scale variable. So in this case, this is uh, the annual meal temperature. So this could be the mean, and this could be a standard deviation. And then the same thing for annual precipitation. Uh, and this circle is the 95% interval, right? So everything that's in here is rel relatively close to the center. And this is where you can compare between models. Um, here you can also see um, this uh, table, which is going to show you all the GCMs and the difference, uh, the distance from the center using the scale by one and scale uh, by a twelve. So usually, what you're going to have is that since this is the annual temperature, everything that's here is warmer, and everything that is here is drier. Everything that that is in this quadrant is warmer and, um, and wetter than the ensemble and so forth. Um, one thing I forgot to show in the chain from the present, but I'm going to show you here is that you can see the mass of differences in any of these cases. So what this is very interesting. So this is uh, going to show you a graphical um, visualization because the the spread of the GCMs is going to show you the average, but this is this can show you some anomalies within the areas you want to study. So here, of course, if it's if it's wide, you're going to have that this is this is a uh, cell that it's right within the ensemble, and red the more red the hotter. In this in, the, in case of the annual mean temperature, and if it, the more blue, that means that it's going to be colder. So this one is very close to the ensemble. This one is very close to the ensemble. This is warmer everywhere. This is colder everywhere. But you can see some other stuff. This is a small region, but here you can see some maps where there's areas that are actually warmer than the sample and some others that are colder. So that's the kind of anomaly that you want to look at. And here is the same thing with precipitation. So we see that these ones have some sorts of anomalies within the map. Um, you can, well, you can overlay the country borders. In this case, this is such a small area that it doesn't make much sense. Um, as I told you, that same thing you can show, you can see it with the change from the present, where you can see the annual meal temperature, and this is the delta. So this is going to be how much warmer it's going to be, and this is the difference in rain. So, for example, here you can see that there's some areas where it's going to 
supposed to, supposedly it's going to rain a little bit more than now there's some others that is going to be a little bit drier um, the other thing that you can do is go to the selected GCMs which lets you explore um, uh, the the GCMs that you have and this is going to just give you the raw values so this is your here you have the baseline and the ensemble for the um, and only the temperature and then each one of the models and the same goes for the annual precipitation so the last thing uh, that you can see in this video is that well, we have a report generator which is um, it's still work in progress so the idea with this is that this shiny app is going to be uh, reproducible so uh, in order for people to be able to uh, under to see what the research was and what was the the what was what was the settings that you made for the for the app you can press the generate report and that is going to be all a pdf that's going to take a while because it's going to show all the settings you had but it's also building each one of the the graphs we saw and the table so i'm just going to open it and this is going to tell you the date where when you generated the report and it's going to tell you some of the things so for example here saying that it's a prediction for 2070 using the rcv45 scenario and then it says that geographic area was chosen using the rectangle drawing tool of the app and the coordinates selected were um and here's telling you the latitude and longitude so this is very important because you can use the drawing box then to re replicate this and then it's going to show you each one of the graphs so in this case for example the this is the the main graph the one that compares all the future models um then you have the unscaled um, baseline against all the models and the ensemble and more, all of the other graphs and maps so that's the app for now uh, we're still working on it especially on the text um, I hope this helps you use it um, um, let us know anything that you think that we can improve with this uh, play with it as much as you want uh, there's probably still gonna be some bugs so let us know if anything anything breaks down while you're using it thank you